Let me tell you a story. I was climbing the corporate ladder, had done for 22 years. And as Stephen Covey says, I was climbing a corporate ladder that was leaning against the wrong wall. <laughs> which is not a good idea in business. Especially after you've spent that much time chasing that corporate dream, the corporate goal of a directorship of a PLC. And I found myself in a situation working for a 1.3 billion company. Only to find out 11 months later the company was restructured, two major departments were merged, and as the new boy into the business, I was the first one out the door. And the corporate dream crashed. And I did probably what every one of you would do. I went home, I grabbed a bottle of red wine, I took the cork out and I never put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> and that started a week or two weeks of depression for me because I didn't have an answer. I'd relocated my family to an employment black spot in the northeast of England because I was working for a PLC head office based in Sunderland. I couldn't find another employment role of a similar calibre and a similar nature because I was probably one of five people in the UK that did what I did. And it was hard to find another role. But the thing I did is the same as everybody else. I started looking inwards and I started looking at you know, why I was failing in life. Why had I lost a major career um, track and have no second plan or no plan B. And what really struck to me is that the one question I'm going to ask you now is what are you in business for? The reason why you have the opportunity to succeed in business today is basically down to our communist uh, Russian partners of 1960. That's the reason you have the ability to succeed in business today because they knew why they wanted to put a satellite in space. It wasn't the how, it was the why. They quickly followed it by a man in space, Yuri Gagarin. The Americans were then losing a technological race which they knew had the ability to change the world. And they didn't want to be left behind. JFK stood on a stage in front of the American Congress and stated that it was his intention that by the end of the 1960s decade, America would safely land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. And that's what led to NASA finding out the how and the why. Yeah? The how to the why, sorry, that they wanted to succeed. The why is always the most important element of business. And if you don't know why you're in business today, when you're faced with a challenge, you'll take a step back instead of taking a step forward and blasting through it. The how to succeed in business is probably in this room. If you don't know how, there are people here that can help you. But the why is the most important element of that goal. Your personal goal, your personal drive in life. I meet managing directors, I meet senior executives of PLCs from London, all over the country, and I don't meet them in the city. I don't meet them in the boardroom. I don't meet them in a hotel. I meet them in the middle of the Sahara, running five and a half marathons with a 20 pound backpack on their back in 46 degrees heat in one of the toughest foot races in the world. And they tell me they're unhappy. They tell me they, they, they just don't enjoy business anymore. They're looking for a challenge that fulfills them. So they're climbing the corporate ladder at, a ladder at a much higher rate than I was, but they're disenchanted with life, they're unfulfilled, and they're unhappy. And I ask them one question, why? Why are you here today? What is it that's galvanizing you? What is it that's ignited your passion all of a sudden? Well, go back and find it. Let me tell you about another lady I helped last year. Christmas before last, she lost her father on the operating table to a crumbling aorta because of poor diet, because of poor lifestyle. Ellie was 19 and a half stone, 39 years old, with a young child going the same way that her father was. And we started talking. She said, Andy, I followed all your blogs. I followed your adventures in the Sahara. I followed your adventures in Namibia. How can I start to change my life? And how can I be goal-oriented like you seem to be? And I said, well, what's your reason why? She says, well, because I don't want to end up like my dad. I've got responsibilities. Helping her, she'd been on numerous diets. She'd been on numerous get fit plans. She had a personal trainer for a year and a half and never lost a stone. <laughs> I spent five minutes with her just asking her about her why. Why is it now important to you? Why is it important to change your lifestyle and not just go on another crash diet? Yeah? She said, well, because I want to have some enjoyment out of life. I want to feel energetic. I want to feel like you. I want to feel enthusiastic. And all I feel is, well, really nothing. So we started talking about her reason why. What was important to her? Why would she want to, want to do this? She said, I want to run a marathon with you. <laughs> Not in the Sahara. <laughs> but I want to run a marathon with you. I said, well, Ellie, you know, you're 19 and a half stone. You can't run a marathon, but you could walk one. July last year, we drove to Edinburgh. My wife, myself, her husband, and her and we walked 
the, the Playtex Bra Moonwalk in Edinburgh. 26.2 miles, starting at midnight, it took her seven and a half hours, but she did it. Her 40th birthday was on the 30th of, 30th of August and she'd lost five stone in eight months. Okay, this year she's entered two 10K races, she's doing the three peaks, she's got the, the Humber Bridge half marathon in front of her, and next year when I do the 66 challenge, which I'll tell you about, she's going to run the marathon in Hull with me. Now, it's not because of the how, it's because of the why. So if I have an opportunity to challenge you today, it would be to go away from here and think why you're in business, why are you driven, why are you not driven, if you feel you should be, but most importantly, what's going to make you get out of bed in the morning with a smile on your face, enjoying every single step of the journey from where you start to where you choose to end it? Now, I'm very privileged to be supporting uh, the Soldiers' Charity in this effort that I'm going to undertake next year. It's the largest national event that's ever been put in place for them. But I spawned this idea in the Sahara, because what do you do when you've completed the toughest foot race in the world? What's next? The astronauts had the same problem when they came back from the moon. What do you do when you've stood on the moon? <laughs> and I read a lovely quote. I read a lovely quote last week that said, don't tell me the sky's the limit when there are footprints on the moon. <laughs> but what do you do when you've achieved something like that extreme, you know, so extreme that you've stood on the moon? What do you do next? They went into alcoholism. They fell into depression. And ever since then, NASA have had three or four different projects all working at the same time with each team of astronauts that go into space or into the moon. So I'd say to you, get yourself a goal that really drives you. Get yourself some ambition about what's going to fire you with passion so that when you come across the next recession, you're going to blast through it because you'll know the reason why and you'll be able to position yourself. So my challenge, 66 challenge, why? A lot of people ask me that. <laughs> why? Yeah. Are you mad? Well, because nobody's done it in the UK. Yeah? It's never been done before in the UK, so why not? And that's always my answer. When somebody asks me why, I ask them why not. Because it can be done. The only person that tells you you can't do something is you. Yeah? And nobody's telling me that I can't do it. They're asking me why I'm doing it, but I know it can be done. So the challenge is this. We're going to run a marathon from every major city or every official city in the UK. There are 66 of them. Six in Scotland, five in Northern Ireland, five in Wales, and 50 in England. They're going to be consecutive marathons. No days rest. Guinness have stipulated they must be consecutive to challenge the world record. And uh, we're going to be doing it from the beginning of March next year. We're writing at the moment to every mayor in every city, and we're challenging every city to raise £1,000 for the soldiers' charity. And then we're going to challenge businesses to engage on the back of that, and we're going to do some speaking engagements, and we're going to have some fun days, and we're going to have some, some kids' days where they can all come and get involved. But there's a lot of reasons for that, and one of them is that you know, there are people over there losing their lives at the moment, and that's the ultimate price. Somebody sent me an email this week saying, when a soldier signs the dotted line to become a soldier, he pledges to the United Kingdom and all of its citizens that he will honour his duty up to, up to and including his life. That's a blank cheque. It's a hell of a blank cheque. Some of them get asked to cash it. Others have it part cashed, and they spend the rest of their lives living with the consequences of their actions in battle and the mental torment that they go through after that. The Soldiers' Charity helps these people to get themselves back into working life. Some of those people that will run a marathon with me next year will have no legs. And for the first time, they'll be completing a marathon on artificial limbs. Some of them will have lost their sight and they'll be running with a blind guide. Some of them will be in wheelchairs and their friends will be pushing them every mile of the way. But if they can do it, I can do it. But the reason that we will all do it is because we have a reason why. And if I could so share one key to success for you, it's a very simple <coughs> equation that I use when I'm helping people in business. If you know why, which is the most important element, and you can find out how, and you multiply it with enough effort over, over the right positive attitude, success will be yours in any line of business or any personal endeavour. That's my passion, it's my belief, it's what I teach, and it's what's led me to gain the successes I've led and everyone that I've helped to succeed have succeeded on the same basis. So I can leave that thought with you. It's been my great pleasure speaking to you tonight.